Stress, anxiety, burnout and overwhelm are all really common experiences of modern life and a lot of us are looking for natural ways to calm our minds and our nervous system so we can operate at our best. And research is now highlighting the role of the vagus nerve, which runs from brain to body on either side and helps regulate our nervous system. So today I'm gonna to take a look at what the vagus nerve does, why there's a surge of interest in stimulating it through electrical impulses to try to impact mental well-being as well as pain and other conditions, what the science shows and doesn't show, safety and where at-home stimulator devices fit in. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist in my 50s exploring how to age well, look and feel good for longer. And my husband David and I have been trying out the Pulsetto device which you wear around your neck to see if it helped make an impact on stress and overwhelm. So I'll be sharing our experience, plus I'll look at whether there are other ways to influence the activity of the vagus nerve without the use of a device. So firstly, what is the vagus nerve? It's your longest and most important cranial nerve running all the way from your brainstem down through your neck, chest and into your abdomen. It's often described as a two-way information highway. It carries most of its messages up to the brain telling it what's happening in your organs, but it also carries messages down to your organs. These downward signals are part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And just to explain a little, we have a sympathetic nervous system, which controls the body's fight or flight reaction, kicking in when we're nervous or stressed. And it can be helpful in small doses by priming the body for action. But if we stay in this state for too long, it can increase inflammation. The parasympathetic system, on the other hand, calms the sympathetic system down and is controlled by the vagus nerve. So when the vagus nerve is active, it helps slow your heart rate, and cool everything down. And what vagus nerve stimulator devices do is send electrical impulses through the nerve. This stimulation is thought to work in two key ways, by changing the way chemical messengers are released in the brain and by helping to reduce systemic inflammation throughout the body. That anti-inflammatory effect is why it's being studied for so many different conditions. And there are two major approaches to vagus nerve stimulation, which we'll call VNS, to prevent me having to repeat that mouthful over and over. So there are implantable VNS devices. These are pacemaker-like devices that require surgery to be permanently attached to the nerve in the neck. The first was approved by the FDA in 1997 for drug-resistant epilepsy and later for treatment-resistant depression. And there are also non-invasive VNS devices, meaning they avoid surgery and stimulate the nerve externally, either through the neck, which is what we tried, or a specific spot on the outer ear known as auricular VNS. This is of course a game changer for accessibility, but the question is, can these non-invasive tools match the effectiveness of stimulation from implanted devices? And for that question, we don't yet have a clear answer, but I will be telling you what a non-invasive device did and didn't do for us in just a moment. And some evidence that we do have for non-invasive devices. For headaches, a prescribed device called GammaCore is FDA cleared for both migraine and cluster headache. It delivers two minute stimulations in short sequences and is one of the clearer success stories among non-invasive devices. For anxiety, small clinical trials suggest that stimulation can help improve autonomic balance. And that means it helps us better regulate our stress response so we can move easily back to a calmer state after feeling nervous or anxious. But studies so far from mood and sleep have been small and inconsistent. For chronic pain and inflammation, new trials are exploring the use of vagus nerve stimulators for inflammation-linked conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. And a review in the journal Frontiers in 2024 felt that with refined technology, optimized treatment protocols, and through exploring combining it with other therapies, VNS has the potential to revolutionize the management of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune disorders. 
As for whether there are risks, well, reported side effects of non-invasive devices are typically mild and local. It's things like tingling, brief dizziness, skin irritation, ear discomfort or headache. Now, when we used a VNS device for a couple of months, we didn't experience any of these things other than tingling during the sessions themselves. And in my case, unpleasant muscular spasms either side of my neck when I use the device on higher settings. Pulsetto, the maker of the device we tested, advises not to use it if you have a pacemaker or other implanted electronic device, metallic implants near the neck, like plates, screws, or stents. I have a titanium dental implant and Pulsetto says that's fine. They also advise against use if you have a significant heart or neurological disease, or if you're pregnant without taking medical advice. Implantable vagus nerve stimulators, by contrast, can carry surgical risks and could cause things like hoarseness, cough, throat discomfort, or swallowing difficulty due to more direct stimulation of the neck muscles. So let's talk about our own experience. Pulsetto provided their VNS device for the purpose of independent review, which means this is not sponsored and I am free to share an experience honestly, including the positives and negatives that we felt. So I mentioned before that the device we tried is a neck worn device and it's actually controlled via an app. And within that app, which is quite straightforward to use, you can choose from five programs of varying duration and electrical pulses, and they are stress, anxiety, sleep, burnout and pain. Now, Pulsetto varies the intensity and pattern by program, but the exact rationale for how each program differs from the other isn't publicly detailed. I was primarily using the four minute stress program and it suggested you use it once daily, ideally in the mornings, which is what I did. And I chose the stress program because I can experience anxiety and overwhelm quite frequently. It's definitely worse going through hormonal change at 52. And I was hoping that this would bring my anxiety down a little. And to use the band, you just place it around your neck, get my mass of hair out of the way, and you can shorten or lengthen the band either side so that it rests just to the side of your throat where you feel your pulse. And then you apply a conductive gel that comes with it onto the area of skin where the two electrode heads will be resting either side. The device has a power button on the right hand side that you press and then you open the app and select your program. And with the power on, it will connect with the device and you press start to begin your time session. And you can then select the intensity with one being the lowest and 10 being the highest. Now I've never used it beyond level five because I will immediately say, I don't love the feeling of electrical pulses running down my neck. And particularly to begin with, it was causing muscular spasms when I used it at setting five. So I tend to use the device at setting three for comfort and that I can tolerate quite well. If you've used something like a TENS machine or microcurrent device, it's a very similar sensation. Also akin to the sensation of humming deeply and loudly and feeling that vibration either side. And hold that thought because I'll be coming back to humming later. My husband, David, typically used the six minute burnout session daily each morning. And we both have pretty similar feedback, both positive and negative. David is very under pressure at the moment. He has to edit my videos on top of his full-time job and he has other commitments too. And he feels a lot of stress. So like me, he wanted to reduce that sense of overwhelm and basically try to calm his nervous system down a bit. So on the positive side, we both said after the first session that we felt calmer. Could that be placebo? Of course, you're taking time to deliberately slow down and the aim is to feel calmer. So that in itself can be helpful. But we felt there was more to it than that. So the most beneficial effects were felt within the first few days of use. Any of you who experience overwhelm will know that it feels like a rush of anxious thoughts just crashing in on each other. And in my case, that reads like a to-do list of all the things I think I should be doing and this sense that I'm not gonna be able to get it all done, which creates the stress and tension. And what we both noticed within days of using the Pulsetto was that that sense of overwhelm greatly reduced. In my case, it did completely stop those crashing thoughts. And I think the sessions have definitely helped lower my overall anxiety levels, which is great. 
My husband felt similarly, but stress and anxiety are still an issue for him. And I wouldn't say that it has been a major mood booster for us either. Mood is around the same. So I think the big takeaway was that we felt it had a calming impact that has definitely been helpful to both of us. Now, just yesterday, I unfortunately had cause to try the pain setting for the first time because I woke with a really bad headache. Something that's usually hormone related and I get every month or so, but it was so bad it woke me up. So I thought I was going to have to go straight to migraine medication. And then I remembered that the Pulsetto has a pain program. It runs for 20 minutes and I put it on. It actually felt lower in intensity. So I did use that on setting five. And by three minutes in, my pain and all the kind of weird body tension and side effects that come with it were reduced slightly. After the 20 minute program finished, I felt better. I felt very clear that it had reduced my pain, but it wasn't totally gone. And from there, instead of taking my migraine medication, I just took an aspirin. And uh, that was actually enough. One aspirin was enough to clear that headache. Now, normally that would take way more than that. So all in all, we have taken a few positives from using a vagus nerve stimulator. On the downside, when we tried the Pulsetto device at night on a sleep program to try and wind down at bedtime and fall asleep more quickly, both of us had the same experience of feeling wide awake after using it. So we didn't use it at night again. It felt like we'd drunk a cup of coffee right before bed and we both lay awake for several hours. Not stressed or anxious, just wide awake. So it had definitely stimulated us, but in the wrong direction. And I thought it was interesting that our experiences of the device and the impact that we felt it had has been almost identical. Overall, I think we feel it's particularly useful for calming, intrusive, anxious thoughts, and in my case, eliminating overwhelm. In my husband's case, reducing it. Quality-wise, the Pulsetto is well-designed and made with high-quality plastics and chunky metal electrodes that feel sturdy and solid against your skin. The conductive electrolyte gel that came with it is non-irritating, despite its green color. There are a couple of removable pads that help position the electrodes by moving the Pulsetto closer or further away from the back of your neck. These are magnetic, which is a nice touch and avoids any tricky Velcro or fasteners when you're swapping them over. It holds a charge for at least a week with daily use, so you're not having to constantly plug it in. The best bit is the Pulsetto connects extremely quickly to the app on your phone, which is great if you're sharing it with a partner or friend and they want to use their own login. The app is simple to set up and there are free and paid for premium options you can choose from. We just went with the free ones. Now, like so many home wellness devices, the Pulsetto is not cheap. It's typically priced around £478, the same in US dollars, but it does often appear to be reduced in price and at the time of publishing is roughly £278 or dollars. So I'm going to link to the device that we used below in the description and I'll also link to a couple of related studies and articles too, as well as some of the other wellness tools and supplements that I use. But here's where we come back to humming, because there are some ways we can stimulate our vagus nerve without using a device. Humming is one of them, and it makes me think of the Om chant used in Hinduism and Buddhism, considered a sacred sound. So when you hum a low and loud Om, you can really feel the vibration through your neck. And that resonance may stimulate the vagus nerve, making it a good thing to add to meditation for calm and focus. The strongest evidence technique though is slow paced or coherent breathing, around six breaths per minute with relaxed longer inhales and exhales through the nose. Studies show this boosts a key measure of nervous system health called heart rate variability, HRV. In simple terms, higher HRV is a sign your nervous system is balanced and resilient, able to shift easily between alert and calm states. Finally, light aerobic activity like walking, swimming or cycling is also thought to be helpful. So that was a potted guide to the vagus nerve and the potential benefits of stimulating it. Do let me know in the comments if you've tried a device or if you find breathing or humming or anything else helpful as a way of reducing stress, 
anxiety and overwhelm. I'm planning to do a deeper dive into the benefits of breathwork on the channel soon, so don't forget to subscribe or follow if you haven't already so you can keep up with all the latest content from me. In the description and on the bottom of any page on my website, honest.scott, you'll be able to sign up to my newsletter where I share links to all my articles and episodes so you won't miss out. But for now, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.